Hey guys. So I can talk a pretty good game about being brave and painting over things that I'm not gonna keep and I'm not sure what to do with, but this one took me for a ride. <laughs> so the original video was actually almost an hour and I couldn't put you guys through that because not a whole lot happened or it happened very slowly. So I'm taking this video just from the kind of midway point of this painting that I started up again yesterday and taking it through to where it is today. Again, I'm not sure if it's done, but it's very different than how it starts out. So you guys can watch my agony of what to do, what not to do, and then finally making some bold decisions. All right, hope you enjoy it. Take care, bye. Okay, so this is a painting I've had in my cabinet for a long time, at least six months, maybe eight, maybe longer. And there were things I liked about it. There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of layers and there's a lot of sanding back and adding more layers. So from a layering and texture perspective, um, there's a lot going on, which is a good thing because I have a lot to work with. But I've been to chicken so far to touch it because I didn't want to mess it up, right? Same old story. I think a lot of you guys can relate that fear of messing it up, even though I didn't like where it was. Um, I finally got the guts to take it forward yesterday. So I started out adding some black, trying to just pump up some value differences. And I didn't like the blue by itself. It's too much blue. That was too much the same. Using a color shaper, working to just keep some things interesting, but also tame it down because there's so much going on that I also felt it was too busy. So blending some of these, the black into some of these areas I thought would also help tie things together. Same story up top. I'm adding some white to keep some of the, that top area light together also. Cohesive, that's the word I'm looking for, to make it more cohesive. I'm mixing a bit of a, you know, periwinkle blue-gray color here. The painting right now is very far from most of my current color palette. So I'm mixing some colors to bring it closer to my current work. Again, to try and increase the cohesiveness. Another way to keep things cohesive, <laughs> add some collage that's the same collage things you've been looking at and working with in other paintings. I want this to feel like it's from the same body of work that I'm currently working on. One of the things I wish I had done differently with this painting is when I went back to it to start it up again yesterday, I didn't start with a huge, bold move. I think if I had done that, it would have made the rest of the painting come together faster. As it was, I did things a little bit at a time, which didn't give me 
a whole lot to go on for my next decision. So all my decisions felt hard or harder than normal. I overthought things. Uh, I didn't have as much to react to of new content to react to. So I just kept adding small pieces and small painted areas. So hopefully next time I'm brave, I'll be even more brave and do something big and bold first that then will help guide me in how I put down other features. That piece I just added right there, that's from actually from a paper paint palette. Because of the, this painting has so much going on, it was hard for me to figure out what to add. And that should have been my first clue to take something away instead. So I eventually started working with the white to calm some areas down. I mentioned before, this is a cradled wood panel. So I had used it earlier to build up a bunch of layers and then sand into it with an orbital sander, which is tons of fun. So I have a ton of texture and history in this painting and on this panel, which I really am happy with. But the composition needs help. So that's what I'm working on today. Just experimenting with my color shaper, seeing what happens if I try to pull some color off when it's not quite dry. Ended up not being happy with most of it, but there were some areas that I really liked the effect. interesting thing in painting is there are sometimes you add things to add things to have more but when you want to have less you still have to add things so it's a bit you know counterintuitive if I want to quiet things down and have less busyness in my painting I still have to add something I still have to add paint I just add bigger areas of paint that cover over the smaller busier areas or just bolder colors or other anomalies. You guys are probably well aware of that fact. It kind of just occurred to me that whether you want to take something away or add something, you have to add paint or paper.
or something else that would cover it up. Sanding is fun. It does take some things away, but often in unexpected ways. So the idea of just sanding one part off doesn't work as well as you'd, you might think. At least I haven't found a way to help it work that way. You generally end up sanding more because it's not a very precise, it's not a very precise process. At least the way I do it. This is my attempt to add some color, bright color. I spent a lot of time mixing different blues for this project. Some green blues, some dark blues, some black-ish blues. And I'm using these now to try to get some glazing happening. Um, if you leave them on longer, you get some interesting marks. funny watching this back even though I did this yesterday and today I totally forgot about that area of stripes that I was trying to add in everything that could have been but wasn't has been forgotten it helps that I have short-term memory issues <laughs> that does help but once you make the decision to add something or not add something. Your brain tends to go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So looking back and rewatching, like for me rewatching this process that I went through is still really interesting to me because I don't remember a lot of these individual steps. Now that I'm seeing them, I remember making the choices and the pieces I was interested in using. But when I look at the painting, I don't say, oh, I wish I had put some stripes in there. Or, oh, I wish that I had, hadn't put the butterflies on. Because when you're in the present and you're working, every step that you add just helps you add the next piece and the next piece. At least that's why what I do, what I do. And that's part of the reason that art helps me stay present. I'm so focused on this is what the painting looks like right now. What's next? What does it need? What does it need more of? What does it need less of? In this case, I decided it needed more circles. Can you really have enough circles in a painting? According to me, probably not. this is me working out some transitions on the bottom half from the far right side of the bottom there's that really dark blue going to the middle that tissue paper collage piece I just added helps bridge the gap between the really dark blue to the lighter blue on the left at least that was my intention
doing a bit of glazing just to pull up some colors, make some brighter areas. I decided I wanted more contrast at the top. There was so much dark at the bottom and so little dark on the top. So I'm using that piece of collage tissue paper as a guideline to color around those circles with black. I wanted it to look just like it was a black piece of paper that I was putting down instead of having, well, I just wanted to have some crisp edges around it. So I used tape. I used a little bit of gloss medium to seal the tape so that it wouldn't bleed under because there's so much texture here. And that helps me keep some really crisp edges. There's so many free flowing soft edge areas of this painting. It was kind of fun to take a minute and very intentionally color this section in. I do have two circle collage pieces right next to each other. I wanted to make them make sure they were different as well. So they're kind of the inverse color situation. And also they're different in scale. Not hugely different, but different enough that it's still a difference. making some drips. This will be a very mysterious reveal once I put that down. There you go. I like how that made a veil over the top of the, the greener blue area with that really dark blue-black.
even though I've made some changes, I'm really just making small changes here and there. The changes all definitely add up and I've added a lot more interest than was there in the beginning. But I realized this morning I need some big changes. So I brought out my giant brush. My giant brush gives me the opportunity to really cover things up quickly and make big, bold changes. Normally I don't paint on the outside of my art like this to, you know, I normally like to bring my art all the way to the end, but, well, this is still art going to the end. <laughs> that, was, that was a strange way to say it. Normally I, I, the subject matter of my art extends all the way out, but I wanted to try this today as a way to do a couple things. One, I get to keep some of the areas that I like a lot, even though they're busy. And two, I get to quiet down other things, get quieted way down so that there's, you can better able, you're better able to focus on the areas that I want you to look at. I'm pulling some of the paint up with the paper each time because I want to be able to control how opaque the white and these cream colors are. I want to be able to, to see some of the information behind it. I really enjoyed making the shape. Um, I definitely finished some of this outside of this video. So you'll see at the very end what I was left with when I was done making the edits that I made after this video stopped. I'm in a much better position. I'm really happy with it where it is now. I have a little bit more to do, but I'm so much happier with this version than I was at the beginning. The one at the beginning felt too busy and just very unlike me. This one feels like new Jackie, right? So it has lots of Jackie elements, but also with this so much white on here is very different for me, but I really like how it turned out. So at the end, I'm still not sure which way I'm going to keep it. If you want it to be, if you think it should stay this direction, the main direction that it is for this video, let me know. And if you think I should change it to make it upside down, then please comment upside down. So this is regular and this is upside down. Thanks everybody. Bye.